All right, well, let's get started in five, four, three, two, one. Ahoy malloy! Welcome to Talking in Teacups, the serious topic show with not so serious people. I'm your host, D Cypher. Joined alongside me is your co host and my best friend, Elbow. Hey, what's up? Elbow, it's good to be here with you today. Yeah, I agree. And you know what? I also think that it's good to follow us on social media. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Threads, TikTok, all at Cypherspit Gaming. But if you can't do any of that, then don't worry because you can watch for free here on YouTube and Twitch. But coming up next, a baker's dozen. And my co host was telling me before we started that, you know, sometimes this news is stale, sometimes it's fresh out the oven. But he said you can't go wrong with a baker's dozen. <laughs> you hear that grumble? He hates that. All right. I got the scoop on what went down to make Joker 2 fully a deuce. Not fully a do, but full of a deuce. So bad. So just to remind you, Joker 2 released and it was supposed to be as good as Joker 1, but they decided to go in a completely different direction. Apparently, Todd Phillips, the director, and Joaquin Phoenix, the actor who played Joker, or Arthur, if you want to say that, were clearly both to blame for this disaster. So, here's how the story sets up. The idea for the sequel came to Joaquin Phoenix in a dream. And Elbow, feel free to interrupt with a, a witty jab at any time. So it just came to him in a dream. He was dreaming, just like Arthur was dreaming. He contemplated on putting, out, putting on a Broadway show before committing to making a movie. So he wasn't even sure if he was going to make it a, a movie. He was like, dang, I just want to do a Broadway show, which would explain, you know, my gripes to why I said those songs felt very old timey. Todd Phillips, the director, had free reign with Warner Brothers wanting to do his thing, and he had no test screenings of the film. Now, if you know anything about how films are made, you know there's always a test screening to see if it, you know, does well with audiences. Nope. Todd Phillips said, nah, no test screening. Lady Gaga was then signed on the project before the script was even finished. Okay, that's not too crazy. That's not actually too bad. The new DC boss, James Gunn, had zero involvement in this movie. He gave notes, but Todd Phillips didn't want to use him. He said, ah, no notes, no notes. I'm doing my own thing. The film had a huge budget. That's $200 million for this movie including a $20 million salary for Joaquin Phoenix and a $12 million salary for Lady Gaga. So they was just having fun, collecting a bag, not even taking the movie too serious. Just this all in a dream. The musical aspect of the film, because remember it is a musical, it was largely downplayed in the marketing. In all the marketing, you don't see anything saying this is going to be a musical or have any musical elements at all. With the director, Todd Phillips, at first insisting when he did interviews and people were talking about it that it isn't it's not a musical obviously we know that turned out to be a lie christopher nolan christopher nolan reportedly changed the ending of the first movie because it ended with joaquin phoenix joker carving a smile there was no resistance for the sequel because nolan had left wb so nolan doesn't do movies for wb anymore so now joaquin phoenix and todd Phillips were able to do that carve a smile but it wasn't on the Joker. It was on the person who killed the Joker. Spoilers for the Joker. It's been out for some weeks now. Uh, continuing. Todd Phillips was scheduled on a... Oh, he was secluded. He was secluded on a ranch during opening weekend. So he didn't even want to be on the internet to get the gripes and the criticisms that was going to come from this movie. He was like, nah, I want to stay away from the world. <laughs> smart. That's actually smart. He's crazy but that's smart the film was panned by uh, fans and critics and it currently holds a 30 percent critic score and a 31 percent audience score from rotten tomatoes or on rotten tomatoes the cinema score is the d and that is the lowest ever score for a comic book film remember we said this movie makes morbius look like uh arthello <laughs> domestically it opened with 37 million lower than comic book films like Morbius and the Marvels. Speaking of which, 
the movie needs to make well it's not gonna make this 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 is just how you know the story is old the movie needs to make 450 million globally just to break even or it may lose the studio over 150 million dollars last tidbit is warner brothers discovery is already over 40 billion with a b in debt so <clears throat> can i just say the fact that he did this with no test screenings means that he knew it was bad. Mm -hmm. I think this was a big scam. I think Todd Phillips pocketed maybe $50 million, put out a dog crap movie, and it was all a big F you to Warner Brothers for some injustice that they did to him in the past. I don't know all the behind the scenes, but this seems purposeful. Yeah, and it's just crazy how WB gave him free reign and didn't check the dailies. The dailies being like, okay, this is what we recorded today. Rough draft, no special effects. And they just gave him no oversight and said, yeah, sure, $200 million. Your first one was so That's good. Crazy. Whatever you make is going if to I be spend, good. If I spend 20 bucks on something from Amazon, I'm always checking the tracking package, make sure that the thing went through. They spent $200 million on this piece of crap and they couldn't send somebody to be like, okay, Warner Brothers, you guys need to check what Top Phillips is doing because this is trash. Yeah, no, the arrogance of WB is costing them money because they just two hundred million dollars. Yeah, you can pay somebody sixty thousand just to check and see that this is not trash. <laughs> you pay somebody sixty thousand just to check. Oh, uh, you you can, and that's funny. But yeah, no, this this is all the fault of. Warner Brothers for being too trusting with Todd Phillips, but it's also Todd Phillips' fault because you directed this movie. You knew it was going to happen. Joaquin, this was on purpose. This yeah. was on purpose, bro. This is D Scythe. Come on, man. We know bad movies. We know good movies. When you make a piece of crap like this after the first Joker, you know that nobody's going to like it. The defense of the movie being a piece of crap is that it's on purpose because it's a takedown of the Joker character because in the first movie, too many incels like Joker. So they said, the director and Joaquin said, oh, no, 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 no. We don't, These are the wrong kind of people liking this film. So we're going to completely just butcher this character because you shouldn't like Dude, him. You shouldn't feel sympathetic for him. When you are playing with somebody else's money is not a time to make a political or a moral stance. You got, you got a job to do. Make a stupid movie and go home. But his obligation isn't to make the movie that we expect it as the audience. His obligation is just to make a movie that he feels as a director, his vision, is going to do good. Now, was this on purpose? I think so. And I don't think it, it was, was good. I think it, I absolutely think it was on purpose. You're talking about the reason I think he didn't do any test screenings is so that he can make that $80 million first week. Because that 80 would have probably been like 50 if people knew what this movie was. Yeah, especially if at the test screenings it got leaked. Like, there's been test screenings of the, um, I forgot the new movie, Captain America New World Order. And people have been saying that it's not good. Like, it's just pretty average and run of the mill. So, if stuff like that would have got out about the Joker 2 fully a deuce, oh man, people would have been like, um, now nah, I'm good. Like yourself, you'd have been it's like, now okay, I'm good. Been it. the best, yeah, it's okay would have been the best rating that it could have got. Yeah, not to go full blown, just crazy. It's just, for me, it's just the unnecessary musical components. And then it being stuck the first, I forget the length of the movie, it's like an hour and some change, maybe two. It's just being stuck in Arkham was so boring. Once we get to the court case stuff, it was interesting, but it, it didn't feel like it went anywhere. It could have been two or three episodes of an HBO thing, and that it would have been like, okay, I got it. But these actors had to get paid. So, yeah, it, this is an ego trip and a bag run because ain't no way, ain't no way, $200 million for this? I, I get it. <laughs> we built a fake-looking city, Arkham, and it looked crazy good. So on the big screen, it did look good. So that had to have cost money because they probably shot it in the West Coast. Again, this is speculation right here. I don't have that pulled up, but they probably shot it in the West Coast to make it look like an East Coast city. That's going to cost you money if you're not going location. Yeah, we don't know that they didn't. Yeah. And if they did, he probably was just sitting there expensing out all the stuff on fancy restaurants. Like, oh, yeah, we're just going to go eat here. 
and also i don't know if i talked about this but i read this on reddit todd phillips was scheduled to do a movie it was going to be like a broke back mountain style movie and at the very last minute either a week or a day before shooting began and also he was like co-producing of this film too so he like knew the script wanted to make the movie at the end or at the right before the movie started he, he just backed out he just didn't want to do it he changed his mind completely and he cost whatever right studio before the movie started yeah right before the movie started right before the movie started filming Film. Film. Yes. Film. Yeah. so they went to location i don't remember if todd went to location two but like either a day or a week before the movie started filming he was like nah i changed my mind i don't want to do it he backed out of it so he cost that studio money they have to figure out how they're going to properly you know handle the contract of you know getting some funds back because now all that crew because remember when you make a movie it's not just the director and the actors the director the actor the cameraman the rigger the the people who get you the food they all flew out yeah, yeah, they, they all, all flew out they all flew out so it cost so much money and I think they said they couldn't find a last minute actor because everything revolved around Todd. I mean, uh, Joaquin. He was going to be the uh, the main actor in it. And then he was ma- <laughs> sorry to add more, but I'm remembering as I read it, he was making some like intense requests, like yeah, this film is going to be like crazy gay, like it's going to be so intense, an intense gay story. And then he just like intensely nah, I don't- gay. Yeah, and he was like, nah, I don't want to do it. So that's that's something. I only mention that because if you go on Reddit and you look up uh, Joker 2, everybody's talking about the prison scrape scene and how it it doesn't show it, of course, but it just alludes to it heavily. And it's like, why was this needed? This what was this for? Why, why was this here? Why do we need this scene? Uh, we didn't need it. I guess he just wanted to practice his intensely gay chops before he moved on to this next movie he wasn't going to do. Pure cinema. But you know what else is pure cinema? Apparently Grand Theft Auto Online, because an award-winning documentary filmed entirely in GTA 5 is coming to streaming and theaters, the selective theaters, in 2025. So these guys, they made a movie in GTA, but it's not like a movie where, they, oh, they did machinima, like we take cutscenes and put everything together. No, they just played GTA Online and like recorded themselves playing GTA online and I guess we're role playing as actors trying to play Arthello. I'm trying to see if I can pull up as you're talking. So imagine me and you just playing GTA online and I'm like, oh you wanna do like Arthello? They go to that that play. Yeah I got oh Hamlet. Are you saying Excuse Arthello? Me. No, it was Hamlet. It was Hamlet. And I was saying Arthello, yeah. Orthello? Arthello. Arthello. Yeah, but here here it is. Let me turn the volume down. Okay, good. Volume's down. And full screen it. You're about to see it on screen right now. This is the trailer to this award winning movie coming out. Award winning. Award award winning. It went to Sundance and won an award. Because you know, Sundance. Wow, what award? I, I don't even know. But Sundance is full of like pretentious people, and they're like, oh, the audacity you actually made a film in a video game this is art this is art well i guess it is art <clears throat> yeah sure whatever what's wrong with what's wrong with that i mean almost everything core concept well not even the core concept the concept of it is is kind of funny I'd have to see the movie, but in this trailer, it just looks like you're recording gameplay. Like, it looks like if you go on my channel and you type in Grand Theft Cipher, it looks like that. We're just having an adventures in GTA. You see, he's trying to, you're doing on the stage, he's trying to record Arthello, but they're getting shot at. He asks the crowd, hey guys, thanks for coming to watch. Um, No guns, please. And they're like, no, screw the photo, I'm going to shoot. <laughs> so yeah, that that's enough of that trailer. That that is uh how long is it this trailer two minutes no how long is the movie i don't know probably 90 minutes but yeah it's called grand theft hamlet trailer and it was not sundance it was is it hamlet, hamlet or a fellow it's hamlet my bad it's hamlet jesus man i don't remember the story of hamlet i just remember othello and that's what i have in my head because i think Lawrence fishburne was in that anyway though so hamlet is about the prince of denmark uh, his father, uh, his throne is being usurped, so he has to come back and kind of like save the crown. 
nice. Feels like Dune. I only say that because my mom was watching Dune 2 in front of me. But you see how he just dies? Like, this is just, this is just Grand Theft Auto trailer. But it's Grand Theft Hamlet, and it, it went to the Cambridge Film Festival. I said Sundance by mistake. It was the Cambridge Film Festival. So, shout out to Cambridge Film Festival for just making anything art. <laughs> I mean, some things are just crazy to do and get away with. But you know what's even crazier than that to try to get away with? Making, I segue. Thank you. Making a patent on something that is accessibility related. So Sony wants to patent sign language in its games. So say you're watching dialogue and sign language will pop up for you. So if you're playing, you know, Horizon and you uh, can't hear, you have something and it'll be doing sign language, but instead of that being like an accessibility feature, like how all games have the colorblind and the subtitles and text to speech, they said, no, we want to be the exclusive ones doing the sign language thing. So Sony's trying to patent that. So on the one if hand, you're dead, you get a PlayStation. Yeah. So on the one <laughs> hand, it's, it's great because it's, you know, more accessibility settings, more people can enjoy games. But on the other hand, it's like, dang, Sony, y'all gotta be the only one to do it and make a profit off of it. I guess that's it's capitalism for you. No segue, because I thought you were going to say something. Skyrim's lead designer. I already made my quip. I already made my quip. Yeah. If Sky- you're there, better get a PlayStation. <laughs> Skyrim's lead designer admits that Bethesda games lack a bit of polish, but at some point, you just got to release the game, even if you have a list of 700 known bugs. And we all know that Skyrim and Bethesda games are known for having their their infamous bugs but I love them I mean Cyberpunk was unplayable but now apparently it's pretty good so you know they, they, they these new games are 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 uh pretty good at fixing the bugs yeah it just depends on you know whatever the the higher ups say because sometimes they won't fix the bugs if it's a sports game. I'm just looking at you, WWE 2K. If it costs more to fix the bugs than it than it would be, you know, profitable after it's fixed, then it's not. It doesn't make sense to fix the bugs. Yeah, but so if, if most of the people who want WWE buy it right away, then fixing the bugs would just be a waste of money. Yeah, but with the thing with WWE, ever since 2K22, I think it was, yeah, 2K22. So there's 2K22, 23, and 24. They've all run off the same engine, and they still have some of the same bugs from the 2022. So how you how is that even possible? Because your new game isn't completely different. It's just updating the roster, adding a new match type, and making a new story mode you're still taking the original assets oh no you do got to scan the wrestlers again so that takes time scanning the wrestlers again because they might look a little bit different and then just updating stats but that's just number stuff for but as far as glitches in their uh it's called universe mode think of season mode from smackdown 2 you should have been had that fixed i guess it's complicated math but yeah they'll have it Is like it? i don't think it's that i don't think it's that complicated but it'd be like you'll have a title match and then you're defending against somebody that doesn't even have the title and that's doing the defense. Like a glitch is in there, but you know. Again, game's been out since 2022. I know it's each one is a new number, but it's the same game. But you know what's not the same? Daredevil. Daredevil's born again. He's a born again man. And apparently it's going to officially premiere on March 4th on Disney Plus. So Daredevil's back, baby. Or he's coming back, baby. Yeah, I don't watch their double. Fair enough. Here's something you should watch out for, and it's called De Nuvo. My friend, my friend, my friend, my friend. Do you know what De Nuvo is? De Nuvo. Isn't that uh, when a girl kind of puts her legs? No, no, no. That That's something else. That's something yeah, that's else. something else entirely. De Nuvo is anti-piracy... Uh, software. So game developers will and, uh, and publishers mostly will pay Denuvo to put this thing that checks for a game key 
you know, like every frame or something to make sure that you're officially playing this game and you're not uh, playing it illegally. But what it does, because it's constantly checking for a key, it hinders your performance. So gamers do not like De Nouveau because, like I said, every frame, you know, 60 frames per second, is checking to make sure you have a key so it causes you lag and stutter. So De Nouveau decided to make a Discord because they could have just you know put out a statement but they said no we want to make a discord we want to talk to the gaming community and dispel any myths that they may have immediately as they made this uh discord server to improve their image hundreds of people came to it and began insulting the developers <laughs> yes in just two days almost two thousand people actually joined the discord <laughs> server <laughs> Some users right. began to behave so aggressively that they, they wrote insults and threats towards the creators of Duvo and the community managers. Among other things, Denuvo was accused of harming consumers and the industry as a whole, as well as the stuff I just talked about when it comes to reducing performance in popular games. Um, one, That's pretty funny. Yeah, one user wrote, the game industry is dying because of Denuvo. Now that's a bit of a stretch. It's annoying, but... The one caveat and the good thing that we got out of that is that Denuvo has two different pricing models. You can pay for a one-time license, I think it was one time, or you can pay for a monthly subscription. So most uh, big publishers, I want to say, is it Ubisoft? It's either Ubisoft or Namco. They'll pay for Denuvo when the game first launched. So that first six-month windows where most of their game sales are at, they'll pay for the anti-piracy uh, Denuvo. And then after that, they'll take it off, usually after a year or so. So then you usually when they make their money. Yeah. So then actually the game's like half off, maybe even a twenty five percent what it usually costs. So you can just wait to get it then. But yeah. Big big L for Denuvo trying to make a Discord server so they can say, Hey guys, we love y'all. And they're like, yo, we hate you. Shut up. <laughs> But you know who we don't hate? We don't hate seeing family. And here's my dad joke. My wife and I took a thousand mile road trip to see our family. So my uncle asked us if we took turns driving all the way up. I said, yeah, because it's really hard to drive in a straight line to get there. Badoots. All right. Do you have a counter dad joke? No, after that, I feel like everybody needs to move on. Yep, let's move on. Topic number one. We're old now. You know, we've been we've been gaming for a very long time. And some of the games that we think, you know, our childhood or our teenage years that were like right around the corner are actually ten plus years old. So my question to you is what older games would you like to see remastered? Such as for me, my answer is gonna be infamous because surprisingly that game is stuck on PS3. I don't understand how that's still possible. You can't get it on PS4. Actually, you can if you do that subscription thing. I'm lying to you. There's the uh, PlayStation Plus, one of those two. But yeah, I want a physical copy of Infamous Remastered, 60 FPS, 4K resolution. Um, The three that pop into my head like right off the bat are Bushido Blade, obviously. You guys know me at this point. Uh, the original Smash Brothers and uh, Toy Story 2. Have you ever played that game? Where, no, where you're Buzz Lightyear? Not the game, no. Interesting. Uh, dude, it's it's a lot of fun, Toy Story 2. You're Buzz Lightyear. And you got to go like find Woody. At, uh, but you go to Owl's Toy Shop. You go to a construction site. At first, you got to do like Andy's room in Andy's backyard. Like, it's all. Awesome. I only remember the Toy Story 1 game because that's back when demos were very prevalent. I love demos. Demos. He's like, I got it for free. That's the only reason I know. Yeah, you would get like, I think it's PlayStation Magazine or something like that, and it would come with a CD inside, a disc, and you would have these demos. Oh, it was the greatest time. That was back when physical media was out here. Now, you know, magazines barely exist. I think... Uh, Months ago, we talked about how Game Informer got shut down. Game Informer was owned by GameStop, and GameStop was like, we got to cut these costs. But, all right, yeah, infamous for me, and I already heard the rumors, and I think we talked about it. Metal Gear Solid 4 is going to be getting remastered, allegedly. So, yes, obviously, we want that. Anything that's stuck on the PS3, we want to bring that on over. Oh, can we remaster Siphon Filter? 
that'd be fun to play that again but you got to do it like how the tomb raider game is where i can still play with modern controls because that game i believe employed tank controls and i don't i don't want to be i don't want i don't want tank controls no tanks for me <laughs> no tanks <laughs> control yeah that so really, sucks you go left and right but it just spins you in the same spot and then you press forward and backwards to move forward but yeah siphon filter did laura croft do that mm-hmm. the first one yep first three games did that actually the first three games were all tank controls but i, I remember as a kid i would, I would pronounce siphon filter siphon 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 filter just it was, an elf. Just, yeah it's a real funny looking word they had some PS2 releases, but I don't think they had as much traction as a Metal Gear. And they were in that same element. Obviously, Siphon Filter was more action than it was stealth. But Gabe Logan, that was his name. That's a cool name right there. Gabe Logan and Solid Snake. Man, now I'm old. All right. Gabe Logan. Yeah, Gabe Logan. Good stuff. I should have pulled another image, too. All right. Let's go into Sippin' Tea. Time to get a rant. I actually don't have a rant prepared or written down. Um, if I could think of one, I have a friend who had a grievance with someone and they didn't say what their grievance was. And I was like, why didn't you just say it? But they want me to say what their grievance is for them to that person who's a mutual friend. Wait, huh? So I have a friend. This is off the top of my head, so I got to keep the names sealed confidential so i have a friend who has a grievance with someone that we both mutually know and they want me to tell them that the grievance is there instead of them handling the grievance themselves because they said they you know they they're above that basically is this i just got it's not above their up. not above their pay grade or it's above their pay grade below their pay grade below their pay grade sorry That's my rant. Uh, you know, I was just thinking, you know, <clears throat> I really love spending time with my family. Life is short. I had a lot of stuff I had to do this week. Not had to do. Uh, I had a lot of plans, you know, a bunch of bull crap. Um, but you know what I was really looking forward to all week? We have like a family movie night on Mondays. Monday movie night. And I'm I'm doing all this crap. I'm like, you know what? How is that the thing I'm looking forward to doing the most? Like, dang, I'm really becoming a dad and an old man. Like, I don't feel like going out. I just want to stay home, watch movies. And it's October, spooky season. So, you know, we're watching scary movies. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, man. Getting old. Getting old. Love to hear it because I'm tired of being in these group texts. And he's talking about he's always going out. And I keep seeing these messages. And I'm like, I hate going out such a long drive it's only because i don't live in the city anymore so he's like yeah i'm going to i'm going to murphy's get them 50 cent wings and i'm like i want to go to murphy's too but i'm tired and then y'all be trying to leave at 11 and i get home at 12 man yeah that's a lot shout out to murphy's though yeah wing night wednesday night (laughs) not sponsored hashtag not sponsored all right topic (laughs) number two when playing a video game as a consumer, what's the most important feature to you? We might have discussed this. I know I put it on the channel, so sorry if this is a, du- a duplicate topic. But uh, based on this little thumbnail I stole from the internet, you got some top- some choices like the story, the gameplay, the music, the polish, the graphics. What's the most important to you? Well, I think it's different. I don't really give a crap about graphics. Um, everything looks good nowadays. As long as it's serviceable, I normally don't give a crap. Uh, but I think it's different for each, you know, game, right? Because well, I play Red Dead for the story, but I don't play Fortnite for the story, obviously. But I like both games. I think for me, the most important thing is is two things. The controls, they have to be feeling good and responsive. And then the gameplay itself. So the gameplay got to be good, but you can't have good gameplay without with poor controls. So I only say this and only have this knowledge because it's currently the Steam Next Fest. Basically think of it like a bunch of demo discs are being thrown at you. So I'm playing so many different games. And there's one game that I thought was a really fun, but the controls were just weird and I wasn't used to. 
Um, I don't remember which game it was. No, it wasn't. It, it could have been. It's all a blur because it's so many different games. If you go on my channel, you'll see the long ass live streams of me playing these different games. And I'm like, one of them was like, dang, I really like this game, but I suck at the controls. So that's what I'm saying. Gameplay is important, but controls, they kind of go hand in hand. Because some games will have good I'll controls. I'll say 90% of stuff. games. 90% of games that come out now have fine, like controls that work. They're fine. Yeah, just copy off the big boys. That's all you got to do. Copy off the big boys. It works for a reason. Yeah. Some of the game I won't fault your game if it only supports keyboard and mouse. Because once the game comes out on Steam, you can just rebind it anyway. So when I was playing like early access, yeah, you can't rebind, meaning like reassign controllers. So I won't I won't fault you for that, even though my personal preference is gamepad. That like, that's how I like to input with my games, interact with my games, I meant to say. I'm not a big fan of keyboard and mouse. It's too too many buttons too too McClunky. Little Star Wars reference. McClunky? Yeah. Greedo says that in the newest, like the Disney Plus version of Star Wars for some reason. Never said that in the original, never said that in the special edition, but in the Disney Plus version of Star Wars, if you watch New Hope, uh before Greedo gets shot, he says McClunky and then just gets shot by uh Han Solo. Well he shoots first, but we all know Han shot first. Han's a he's a mercenary. You know how to go. Prove it. I can't. Those old VHS or what Betamax disc are gone, lost in time. You got to go on eBay to find them now. So you're just disparaging this guy. You can't prove that he shot first. Damn. I mean, he, he might have points in lost in time. Lost two time, I meant to say. Maybe it's a Mandela effect that you have. You think Han shot first. But everybody has shirts about it. Everybody has shirts that says Han shot first. Han shot first. You can't listen to the liberal media. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you how I was scrolling Reddit to find uh, topics. And The Undertaker and Kane sat down with Donald Trump. And they did like a promo. It was like, you got a choice this November. You can vote for Undertaker, Kane, Trump. Or you could side with, it either said side with or vote. I didn't really watch it and I was half tired. Or, said, or you could side with Batista, Kamala, and Waltz. I was like, Batista. what kind of shit is this? Because <laughs> Batista is, is siding with um, Kamala. Kamala. He's a man. He can side with whoever he wants. But it was funny watching that because I'm like, Why what is this Batista? pro, bro? Because that's just, I, I have no idea. But it was it was funny to me because I watched it with no sound, so I had to make my own voices up. Because I'm like, what is this I'm seeing? Why is Undertaker doing this? I know Kane uh, went out and supported Trump. I'm like, Undertaker, Taker, no. But Taker from Texas, so I get it. He want to keep his rights. He all about that. He like, I need my state rights. The states are right. Goddamn government. It's all right. The federal up, government sucks state. blood. I mean, debatably, they both do, but... I don't know too much on the topic, but debatably, I'd say they both do. Yeah, but it's not like Republicans are going to help. The uh, government definitely yeah. sucks, but it's not like the Republicans going to do anything yeah, about nah, it. They're I, the I, government don't, I don't see either side helping much. As you told me, let me yeah. tell you a quick little story. This is not sipping tea. We're supposed to be moving on, but I'll tell you a quick story. About a few years ago, I was never really involved in politics too much. I just knew from the outside, and it was always uh, black people go Democrat, white people go Republican. And I was talking to my good friend Elbow, and he was saying, you know, this is two sides of the same coin. This was during the Trump time. It was either like before or after. So this is around 2016 and up, wherever Trump got elected, I don't know. And he was saying that, yeah, he was saying that Republicans will spit in your face directly. And I'm paraphrasing. He knows what he said, probably remembers. I don't remember too much. He's like, a Republican will spit in your face directly. They'll tell you how they feel. This is back when everybody's being mad racist. Yeah, Trump was elected. Everybody's being mad racist. He's like, I w I'd rather have you tell me that you, you racist versus the Democrat side where they don't tell you. And I was just, it, it gave me something to ponder on. And I was like, dang, I get it. So basically, the Republicans would be direct and spit in your face versus the Democrats who will stab you in the back. Paraphrasing. I feel like I told you this before. But I saw the realest picture I ever saw recently, and it was a piece of dookie on the floor. <laughs> and under under the p the picture, it said Republicans, and then it was a piece of dookie in a gift wrap box, and it looked all nice. And then under that, it said Democrats. Yeah. At the end of the day, yeah. they're both just pieces of crap. That's so funny, so apt. 
and yeah and maybe it's because i've become more jaded but i i do find myself agreeing with the both sides suck but i still prefer the gift wrap dookie the gift wrap dookie and the stab in the back i at least want to feel good because what again i well the show that took a turn but let's just go there i'd rather at you least said I, you said i'd rather feel good you're a crazy person all right let me tell you why let me tell you why we should do it's some more january sixes have everybody scared of us <laughs> definitely don't agree with that the only, only reason why is as, as we talk about dude. on the show i'm not strapped if i was strapped i feel like that too i ain't a texan right now he's a texan that's why he feel like that because he's a texas texan walkers ranger i can't get the name right but um the reason why i'd rather have that is because republicans used to be fine when we had george bush Every, nobody was acting all crazy everybody's just about their money and their little pdas and all Are you that crazy stuff. I think freaking Kanye West said George Bush does not like black people on national TV. <laughs> he did say that Kanye West was tripping, but nobody was out here wilding. Once Trump got elected, politics became more of a theatric show, and it got way crazier and less professional. George W. Bush was likable. My man choked on a pretzel. I was like, okay, I can get behind this. That's not too bad. Then we had Obama. Everybody was chilling. They was getting their hair purple and, and pink, and we was all happy. And then after that, it was like, oh, no, we need this crazy shit. We need to go tell it how it really is. And then that was the appeal. When we in 2016, we didn't know what was going to happen. Even Dave Chappelle was like, "All right, man, let's just get this guy a chance." I think he said later on, he was like, mm, "Maybe I, maybe I misspoke." But uh, yeah, it, it got Bush and Obama yeah. both suck too. Yeah, for sure. Well, wait, how do you feel like Obama sucked? Obama, his policies suck. However, uh, he was cool as hell. He's he's he is what a president should be charismatically, professionally, all that. Yeah, but uh, again, he's he's still the government, you know. But see, that's what I'm saying. I'd rather have that. I'd rather have our figurehead, the person who he doesn't really make the laws. He just like he'll veto or sign the law, something like that. I know it goes through Congress. They got to vote on that's it. What all pro- vote. That's what all presidents do. I know, but some figureheads, some presidents just be inciting too much shit. That's what I feel like Trump does. He just be inciting shit. Like you supposed to have us all come together, but he just be like inciting shit like why are you instigating we, don't need to all come together. we just need to all mind our own business hmm interesting thought i think we all need to that's come why together. you're talking about state laws i need i need to go down to city and township laws i mean yeah federal that's... government needs to be taken out of it completely screw the fed that's true too but then you'll have some states doing some crazy shit like i want to say it was what, is t- what does it matter to you it, uh, man, god damn you so jaded it was one state you're not gonna, you're gonna live there i know but hear me out it was one state i don't remember which state it was i'm gonna say tennessee but i don't think it was and they they put bible in the school now because you know it's supposed to be a separation of church and state but they they mandate that you got to have the bible in the school and that's a state law and i think that's crazy well they, well, they moved to kentucky god damn god damn He's making every st- uh, elbow. He's making every state its own country. Basically, that's how you want to do it. I, I think that's I how want- you see. I think yeah, the no, federal really government yeah. has overstepped its bounds and what it's supposed to be. You're so right, but I, I just, I don't know. For some reason, maybe it's because it's just fresh off of my head. I feel disagreement, and I feel like the government needs to step in and and gets a little bit more socialism. Like they need to take over some stuff because we got so much. What's the last? So you're giving them a lot of power. Who's yeah. the last? Yeah politician that you would trust with your child safety Mm, obama 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 okay i feel like it's because he's black he's kind of like the fatherly figure he got a lot of that you feel if it wasn't obama it'd be jfk jfk no 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 no. jfk no 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 (laughs) no no i like him but no likable that's what i'm saying i just want somebody that's likable agreeable a lot of perverts are likable <laughs> uh, even though i was never in character that would have broke character right there <laughs> i can't even i, I can't i don't trust none of these people with my kids safety i just they need to just mind their own business leave me alone lower taxes the less of them there are the lower our taxes will be that's true too. That's what I'm saying. Like his points, elbows points right now are all good. If anybody's siding with decipher and understand what I'm saying, help me out in the comments of this video because I think I lost my point. I, I he's he's good. I can't do it. 
but we're going to switch things up a little bit a little bit we're going to do guess the movie before we start do you want to like the clue of what the theme is or you just want to try to figure it out yourself i'm uh going in raw all right let's do it guess the movie that is god of war wait which god of war? Superman thing? i use the mm-hmm. superman filter I mean, I use the, the super, I use the superhero filter. Excuse me. Superhero filter. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, this is God of War, the new God of War, the remake. Do you know the year? Uh, the year. Oof, I don't know. Twenty one. It is twenty eighteen. I'm gonna see if I actually have that pulled up before I start asking about years. Okay, yeah, I do have the years pulled up on my uh, other screen. Correct. Ding ding ding. Guess the movie. This is Witcher. Which Witcher? I need the title. And I need Witcher the, three, uh, the Wild Hunt. That's correct. Bonus points if you know the year this released. Uh, twenty nineteen. Incorrect. Twenty fifteen. This game is old as hell. As you. <laughs> this Thank is you. my son was born. In- Already going to buy his first car. This is Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Ding ding. Uh, do you know which year this released? 20... Gets hard. 18? It gets trickier. 2017. No, bo- no bonus points for you. Let's keep going. We have Guess the Movie. Ugh. Is this Assassin's Creed Valhalla? What is this? I'm going to go with Valhalla. All right, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Ooh. No, Skyrim. Skyrim. Oh, do, you, do you remember shoot. the release year for this? Very special. Skyrim 2016? Nope, 2011. This was 11 11. Hey. Yeah, 11 11 make a wish. 11 11 11, excuse me. And I think there was a baby born on 11 11 11, and he got to get, I guess, all but that's the games for life or something like that. But yeah, they was, at, they was doing like a little campaign, like, hey, if your baby's born this day, something, something, something. Our guess, the movie. Am I going to be mad when I find out what this thing is? I don't want to answer that. Any clues I give you might give it away. Is this GTA 5? Show me GTA 5. Correct. Look at that. Yes. Let's go. Before we move on, well, you should know the year. Give me the year real fast. Uh, I know it's either 2013 or 2014. I'm going to say 13. Yes, that's correct. You got a bonus point. Good. How'd you know that was GTA 5? Like, what gave it away for you? Uh, so it was clearly modern. I thought I saw a skyline in the back. Okay. And yeah, then yeah. this guy, so this guy just lo- reminded me, I'm trying to think, which character like this people remind me of? This guy reminded me of Michael. Oh, and wow, when I saw wow. the other one was black and the other one was white, I'm like, hold up. Let's see, GTA 5. Yep, that's the Trinity right there. There we go. All right, guess the movie. This well, one, he's I can't not even guessing. see anything This here. one, he's not guessing. Yeah, the AI filter was crazy. I mean, even the game was like, I wouldn't have got that either, so. Well, I can't even see anything on this goddamn screen. I mean, what you got for me? Take a guess. I don't know. Portal? What the what? It is Portal, but it's Portal Two. You didn't give me the full no title, way. so you get it only you get only partial credit. You didn't get you didn't say Portal Two. No but, way! This is Portal. Portal Two, yeah. Good guess though. You got a crazy, oh. amazing, uh, accuracy, like some Red Man, uh, Rain Man type stuff. What's the <laughs> What's the year this dropped? Give me the year. Portal Two. Yep. Uh, eleven. Yes. 12? Yep. Twenty eleven. There you go. Okay. Oh, nice. I guess the movie. Mm. I know I'm going to be mad when I see this one. I know I'm going to be mad. When I see this one, bro, I I can just tell I'm going to be mad. (sighs) Come on, give me some. I'm trying to focus on this yellow and black guy. I feel like he is the key. (laughs) <laughs> I tried not to laugh. The thought for I love just how you just put it together. He was like, he is the key. Ah, shoot. Man, I don't know. 
Uh, I do not know. Uh, Halo? Alright, we got Halo. Oh, no, it's Mass Effect 2. I'm sorry. What year oh. did Mass Effect 2 release? Mass Effect 2, 2009? Nope, that was actually 2010. 2010. Dang it, I was only a year off. Guess the movie. Okay. This guy's walking around strapped. Looks like uh, Chicago. Uh, so, But it doesn't look like Watch Dogs. Uh, is it Watch Dogs? Alright, show me Watch Dogs. Oh no, that's Joel. This is The Last of Us. Joel. What year did The Last of Us release? The first one? Yep. The original. Uh, original 20... 12? 2013. So close. You being a year off. <laughs> Guess the movie. Uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. That is correct. What year did Super Smash Brothers Ultimate come out? Uh, what year did the Switch come out? I can't tell you. And also, I don't know <laughs> off the top of my head, but I also can't tell you. Uh, 2017? 2018. Oh, so close. If I, yo, uh, the next guess I say, I'm just going to go a year later. <laughs> All right, tell that me happens to me like four times in a row. Yeah, tell me what your guess is, and then we'll add one year to it. So we'll do it like that. All right, guess the movie. The Spider-Man. Which Spider-Man, sir? Who? Spider-Man 2? Yeah. I'm sorry. This is Marvel Spider-Man 1. You a hoe. I swear you a hoe, bro. <laughs> you a hold me, bro. You save, hold me. Save yourself and tell me the year. Make sure you do the plus one trick. I think the year is 2019, though. Well, the year was 2018, you fool. And if I added plus one to that, that would have been 2020. So, yeah, no, the year I was I wouldn't 2019. say 2019 because I tried to go a year <laughs> later. Oh, man. The thing that these games all have in common, uh, this is based around topic number one, is these games all came out in the previous decade. So these are all games from the 2010s, Mass Effect being the oldest and it feels like Skyrim's the oldest, but Mass Effect 2 is actually the oldest. That came out in 2010, then it was Skyrim and Portal 2 in the same year. So, thank you, 2010s, for such great games. It was a good decade for gaming. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. Alright, do we have... I don't have any viewer mail. Do we have a gun line today, boss? Oh, yeah. Do you know who Jay Cutler is? Nope, but I'm going to get that pulled up while you tell your story. Jay Cutler. J-A-Y Cutler. Uh, so, Jay Cutler was the quarterback for the Chicago Bears for a number of years. He also, you know, flip-flops, was from team to team a little bit as in, later in his career. Um, people liked him because he was kind of an everyman. He, like, was smoking his interviews, like, well, cigarettes. And, like, he would drink beer on the offseason, like, stuff like that. Is he also a My bodybuilder man, or am I looking at the wrong person? Uh, he is not a bodybuilder. He's the guy on the left at the top. Okay. He is not a bodybuilder. Let's get this guy out of the way. He's a quarterback, not a bodybuilder. Um, but my man Jay Cutler, this past week, got a DUI. He rear-ended somebody while he was really drunk. Uh, he he tried to pay the person two thousand dollars if they would just let him leave. Person said no that he needs to you know take his insurance information and jay cutler tried to pull off the cops apprehended him tried to give him a field sobriety test and he failed miserably oh, jay. <sighs> jay cutler <laughs> you were an everyman and i guess you still are and that is my gun line take him to the gun line balls pew, pew, pew. all right so time for topic of the show what type of games attract the most toxic players uh, uh what type of games attract the most toxic players yeah i don't know if there are toxic players people enjoying the game they enjoy it in their own way <laughs> uh oh, you fool let me tell you games that tend to attract like the most toxic players those are the games that we call sweats. 
sweats, tryhards. They're typically highly competitive, fast-paced games, and the emphasis is on winning, not on, oh, this game is so fun. No, the emphasis is on winning, trying to get your kills up. You know what's fun? What's fun? Winning. And if oh. you suck <laughs> and you can beat this guy at a game that does not mean that this game type of game attracts toxic players, that means you suck at grindy type sweaty games. I mean, two things can be true. You can suck at grindy type sweaty games, but I'm just saying people that play, not everybody, obviously, but people that play Call of Duty and even MOBAs, those uh, multiplayer online battle arena games like League of Legends, the community can be very toxic towards you if you're not, if you're a book bag and they got to carry you because they just will be like, yo, they should be. You suck. Damn. You're toxic. You're toxic. You're toxic. At least I'm good at video games. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather be toxic and good rather than trash. Yeah, well, that and a nickel get you five cents. And it'll also get me the dub in these games that you're talking about. Okay, so when I'm playing, uh, what's that game with the soccer and the cars, the RC cars, Rocket League, do you feel like uh, yelling at me? Because I'm bad at that game, and I tell you, but you'd be like, yeah, come on, let's get on Rocket League. You're my friend. If you were a rando, I would say, <laughs> yes, you suck. All right, I, I still am going back to Call of Duty, though, because Call of Duty, at least from my formative years, was known for having those crazy online, um, what's it called, chat rooms. Not chat rooms, but the, the like the chat, voice chat, whatever you're saying, the N-word and all kinds of craziness. So to- Call of Duty is definitely the most toxic, or those type of games bring out the uh, toxic uh, players. You don't, you don't realize, when we used to play Rocket League online, me and my friend, you know Selco. Yeah. We would uh yeah. Selco <laughs> we would, was uh, notoriously talk, not from the Delco, by the way. We would talk a lot of trash in the chat. Oh see. We would uh tell people that they have mouth herpes. We would tell them, Hey, you got two dads, you know, stuff that just basically would, you know you know, I but say you guys suck this Orioles at the main he's menu. Toxic. That's why in this to- in this particular topic of the show, he's like, Man, nah, ain't nothing wrong with it because he's the problem. Elbow was the problem. Tutorial, tutorials at the main menu. You got to look and see what would affect them personally. Like if they got a Ravens um, <laughs> thing. Everybody in Baltimore has AIDS. We all know this. You know, you got to just throw in a little stuff to make people mad. It distracts them. They sit there typing back to you instead of actually playing the game. I've seen RDC World. I know about the Hood Nigga Olympics and the Instigated Award. <laughs> I know. So, yeah. <laughs> Any game where it's, I'm sorry, not trying not to laugh. Any game where it's clearly it, black, we call them the N word. They get all they get all upset. Oh my god, <laughs> try not to laugh and stay in character. The high stakes games always have that pressure, and if you play in them and you aren't as good as them, as Elbow is pointing out, yeah, you're going to get you know reamed, raked over the coals, and then people online talking all that ish because they 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 hide behind their username, so they all anonymous. And if you're playing on the team, oh yeah, and the enemy is fun. <laughs> God, this guy's such. You're, yeah, you're the problem. <laughs> Do you play um, those MMO RPGs? Have you ever played anything like that, like a World of Warcraft? I used to. You used to. I used to play RuneScape. I used to rob people of their accounts. See, and talk say, about hey, about did you talk realize about? RuneScape won't let you type in your password? And they go, that's crazy. My password is blank. And then I would log out real quick. Log into their account. Take their gold. Steal a lot of their money. Yep. I, I remember that trick. I definitely remember that I trick. Saying, and I think I might have even done that. I like, fell for that as a kid. I hate being a kid because you're so dumb. It's like, RuneScape won't let you type in your password. Account. Then my dumb ass type. I got level 100. But I'm not playing RuneScape no more. Anybody want my account? I want your account. All right, 20K. Give me 10 now and then 10 after you get the account. Okay. <laughs> Thanks like, for the 10K, fool. I, I, <laughs> I can't. Yo, he's toxic. I didn't notice about him. He's toxic. Excellent shit talker. Actually, we talked about it last episode, how he would no-scope me. This is back when we would play Medal of Honor. No-scope. No-scope. Like, he would shoot me. I'd be dead, and he would say, no-scope. Like, you know, he'd shoot the ball and be like, Kobe. He would do like that, calling out his shots. <laughs> it was so crazy. Yeah, I didn't even know. I was I was with a toxic friend all along. All right, that's, that's all I have for this episode. I can't stop laughing. This is hilarious. Um... As always, 
if you want to hear your topic on the show, feel free to follow us on any of those social medias. Use hashtag TNT and we'll we'll discuss your topic in so not so serious detail because we'll be back same black time, same black channel. We out.